Hello, welcome to Chief Center Ministry. Welcome. Where today we're going to hit you with a topic. All good things, all about Jesus. That's right. Holy so Spirit. We're going to do a Father God. biblical Christian topic that we're just going to choose. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been doing, and it seems to be really great. So the topic is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? Well, the Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom. wisdom. Yes. So what, if, when you think of the fear of the Lord, what's the first thing that pops in your head? When I think of the fear of the Lord, I think, I think of, hmm, respect. And what else? Keep going. Share your thoughts on the fear of the Lord. Reverence. You ask me what word comes to uh -oh. mind. So I stole you the word. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having a little miscommunication here. But um, so what I'm asking you, lovely wife, is we're talking about the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? And why does it matter? So the fear of the Lord is having... A deep, profound respect for the one who gave his life so I can have eternal life. And so that respect is acted out in my daily life, right? Having an awe of who he is, respecting him, reverencing him. And the way that I show that I respect and reverence him is by living out my relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he did all these things, right? He came to the world, you know, he was incarnate as a man. Mm -hmm. And he walked this earth to show us how to live. And he, um, he took on a cross, right? He mm -hmm. died, you know, was crucified. He was buried, you know, and um, he rose in three days. And uh, he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of Father God. And he did that so he can live on the inside of us. So it wasn't enough just for him to be physically with us. With us. He wanted to live within us, on the inside of us. That's how close he wanted to be with us. And so when we make the decision, right, because we have to willingly make that decision because God gave us free will. And when we make that decision, we create a covenant, right? Mm -hmm. And we come in agreement with God. And we say that, yes, you are the one who I love. You're the one who I cherish. You are the one who I hope and trust in. And I give you my life. And I give you my life as a sacrifice. And as I give my life to you as a sacrifice, I'm going to take time to relate to you. I'm going to take time to relate to you by praying to you, by spending time with you, by getting to know you and taking time to listen to you so I can hear you. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the fear of the Lord. What does that have to do with the fear of the Lord? See, you're saying a bunch of good stuff. You're saying mm -hmm. what God is, who God is, and mm -hmm. what he did for us, and how we give our lives to him. But we're talking about the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So let's steer back. Deep time out. I'm hitting my wife with a time mm -hmm. out in the middle of the game. Okay, we get a time out. We're talking about the fear of the Lord. And I know that you understand the fear of the Lord. So I'm going to share a little bit. What is fear? Fear is when you're scared, right? It's when you tremble. It's when something causes you to be alert and aware because in the presence of that thing or that something or that whatever it is, it does something internally in you that says, I need to be aware. I need to be cautiously yes. aware because Awareness. this could possibly harm or hurt me. Awareness. We're talking about God. Fear of the Lord is the yes. beginning of wisdom, right? Yes. So if we fear God, that means we respect God. My wife was talking about reverence and respect. So we fear and respect God. If we're going to fear and respect God, how does the respect come from fear? Well, it's God. He created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Like I'm telling people all the time, when Moses went on the mountain, he saw the burning bush. What did he do? Mm -hmm. What did he do? 
He bowed down and took his shoes off. He, um, God told him to take his shoes off. This is holy ground. And do we get a Moses that's kind of like, whoa, he's kind of cautiously aware. Yeah. And we see like some kind of like, whoa. Yeah, he was like, whoa. He's kind of scared. Yeah. Taking it back. What is this? I mean, this? if you saw a burning bush that was fully alive and burning, you know, but not consumed or destroyed by it. And it was this live bush with this furious flame going through it. Wouldn't you? You taken aback by it? Sure, that's what I'm saying, the fear of the Lord. So yes. me, when I first came to know God, when it was witnessed unto me at 17 years old in a Burger King parking lot, the youth minister who ministered to me told me about my sins. Mm -hmm. He asked me, was I a sinner? We don't see this nowadays. I got saved in the mid-90s, early mm -hmm. 90s, probably 94 I got saved. And so when I got saved, he presented the realities of hell to me. And I believed mm -hmm. that hell was real. Mm -hmm. There has to be a fear, a healthy fear of God. God has the ability mm -hmm. and the authority to punish us eternally, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about punish us, you know, on earth from consequences of sin. We punish ourselves by committing those sins. We deserve to be punished because there are consequences for sin. But Jesus saved us, right? So he stepped in and saved the day. But yes. if we don't know Jesus, God is going to separate those who know him and those who don't. And those who don't are going to be separated eternally into hell. So if we don't fear hell and we don't fear what God can do us, how do we know that even salvation is even what it says it is, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be saved from something, saved from ourselves. Yes. And for most people, the reality, for a lot of people, the reality of hell, especially back in the day, back in the 60s and the 70s, people were getting saved off the message of hell. We've all but excluded the realities of hell from almost every church I ever go to. You rarely hear hell preached. And it's so important because what do we need to be saved from? Seek a friendly church. Ideas, honestly, meant well, but I believe they harm the church ultimately. Yes. They, it, it was. A, it's a good idea. It's a good yes. thought and process. Yeah. But what it does is it takes the reality of God's scripture mm -hmm. and it says, hey, we're not, even though mm -hmm. it doesn't. So seek a friendly says, hey, it's still in the Bible, mm -hmm. but we don't want to focus on this. Yeah. What do you mean we don't want to focus on it? The whole book of the whole book of Daniel, the whole book of Revelations, mm -hmm. the whole book of Ezekiel. There's so many, a lot of what Moses went through with condemning the people and it, it, the Sodom and Gomorrah, the list goes on. How, how do we ignore this stuff? Yeah. We gotta yeah. fear the yeah. consequences of God, right? Yeah. For our sins. Yeah. That's just my thoughts. What's your thoughts on fear of the Lord and why fear of the Lord is necessary? I think that's a good aspect about the whole fear, you know, as the seeker friendly churches chose not to preach about the fear, you know, and about the reality of hell, how, you know, the fear of the Lord kind of lost this, you know, it kind of mm -hmm. lost this importance, you know, yeah. and then after that, you know, you have people that want to come into church and they're kind of like, just take me as I am, you know? Right. You ought to be glad I'm here at this church. Like, I'm going to give to you instead of being thankful that God chose to forgive them, you know? Mm -hmm. And bring them in and have a relationship with them. The reality of that, that they escape hell because God chose them. The Bible says that it wasn't you that chose him. It was him that chose you. Sure. He chose you us know? from the beginning. Yeah. He chose you. Sure. And in that moment when you said yes, you said yes, but it was ultimately him wooing you mm -hmm. and pulling you in for you to say yes. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that people don't understand that once you give your life to the Lord, you know, there's a process called sanctification. Sure. We shouldn't stay the way we are. Right. And that's where the fear of the Lord comes from. And I think people don't want to hear about sanctification. No, they don't want to hear about sanctification because it means we got to get rid of things that we like. Ourselves. We got to deny ourselves and to not deny this flesh. I remember I used to go to church with a guy. He always said the stinking flesh. And that was, he always, I don't know why. I don't know if you, I'm not going to name names, but you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the stinking flesh. <laughs> Yes. But he would always say the stinking flesh. And yes, the stinking flesh can be our enemies. It's our own flesh 
Yes. But it's enemies against our own spirit, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But because the Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but a prince it's against prallies and, and rulers mm -hmm. in the heavenly realms. So mm -hmm. we have to have something to fear. And it, fearing mm -hmm. God doesn't mean that God is is going to be mean and he's going to be brutal and God is a dictator. People like to put those terms on him. God is the light. Fearing the Lord is like having this awareness. You know, it's like having, it's like recognizing who he is, who he is, what he can do, what he can do, what he brought you out of and the reality that you could still be in your own personal hell on earth. There's the real hell, you know, that you could go to once you die if you don't have him. And without him living on this earth is like a personal hell. You cannot live life apart from Jesus and feel satisfied because he will put something on the inside of you that no matter what you do in life, no matter how many degrees you get, no matter how many houses you buy, how many brand new cars you get, you can never be satisfied with it because he is the ultimate one that truly does satisfy. Right, right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the things of this world are temporary. They're very they come temporary. and go. They're not. And they're they, not enough they, to fill us. They, and, they are they, they, short lived. Short lived, right. And the relationship with, with God, with Jesus Christ, the Jewish man, Yeshua HaMashiach, is eternal and it lasts forever. And it's enough. It's it more than enough. enough. Like, it is it can enough. sustain us. But you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. You can't just say, oh, I'm saved. And that's it. Right. Yeah, you yeah. You don't read your word. You don't pray. That's not showing the fear of the Lord. You don't pray. What else? You 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 completely write off the gifts of the spirit. Like they don't even matter. Like, oh yeah, God, by the way, this great wonderful gift that you want to give or gifts you want to give, prophecy, speaking in tongues, right? Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need these things, God. By the way, mm -hmm. this is just some garbage that I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. What? What is it where the Bible says that we're supposed to be like living living letters or walking epistles? We should be you know? <laughs> the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. We should be, be walking out our journey with God so much so that when people see us from a distance, not up close, from a distance, they know you know God. You're barely a Christian. What does that even mean? There's so many people. I'm a Christian. Really? Never would have guessed it. The people that run across you and know you day to day never would have guessed it. I've been called fake Christian. I've been called all kind of things. But one thing I know, I've always confessed before the Lord. I've continued to go to church. Not saying that going to church makes you a Christian, but we go to church because we want God. We want Jesus. We, we ain't no show. We want to show reverence yes. to God by hearing his word mm -hmm. spoken. From a man of God. Of course, we're not going to go to a yes. church where we think they're speaking blasphemy in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Not going to be a part of it. We want to hear the word of God preached. And we want to get close to God by receiving the word in our heart that can that convicts us into transformation. Yes. That convicts us mm -hmm. from the spirit of God that we need to go home and pray. And we need right. to spend more time praying. Absolutely. We need to yeah. quit playing yeah. Christian and we yeah. need to start being about God's business yes. and praying and reading the word mm -hmm. are the two most important things we can do. And fasting. And fasting. <laughs> and fasting. That's a topic for another time. Yes. And it's very important. Yes, it is. And it's something. Yes. We started implementing a better this yes, year yes. and we've done in the past, but yes. you know, we've kind of, it kind of slipped away a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's a practice that we should constantly be involved yes. in because Jesus fasting is biblical and it's important yes. in the Bible and it should be important to yes. us. And because the Bible says sometimes, what does it say? Some demons only, only can be driven out. How? Out only by prayer and fasting. Only by praying and fasting. Mm -hmm. It's important today. It was important then. Yes. Listen. And then Isaiah says, um, Return to me with um, prayer and fasting, I think, in the book of Isaiah. Fasting is important. We, it is. To me, being a Christian without prayer, that's like, boom. Listen, we got to pray. 
and listen, we all ain't going to pray elaborate prayers. It's not about being elaborate. No. It's about being intentional. It's about your heart. It's about your heart. You've got to say, hey, God, he understands what you're saying, but we got to talk to God. Because we got to pray. The, the word of God doesn't say, it, it doesn't say um, not to pray long prayers. It says not to pray long prayers with all these words like the Pharisees do because they're empty. Bingo. Okay, so you have Hannah, you know, she travailed in prayer when she was, you know, petitioning God for a child. You know, that wasn't a too many prayer. She was she was pressing into something, you know, so much so she entered into the presence of God. She became slain in the spirit. And the prophet, Eli, he couldn't even recognize that this woman had been, you know, touched by the presence of God. Yeah, he it, thought she was drunk, right? He, she, he thought she was drunk with yeah. wine. And so that is, I mean, think about that. A prophet couldn't a prophet. recognize A prophet, a prophet couldn't recognize couldn't that, recognize that so this that woman was... in the was, Old yeah. Testament. That's the old time. She so was she was moving about, in the spirit of God. Think about present day. Yeah. You know? And so when we truly, truly do have a fear of him, we love him. Yeah. And the word says, you know, if you if you love me, you would obey me. He said, My sheep hear my voice and they obey me. You know, so it's right. not just to 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 hear him, but you obey him. When he speaks to you, obedience, obedience. You know? Listen, we as Christians need to have a healthy fear of God. Yes. And we as Christians need to know the reality of heaven and hell. And we as Christians need to know that sin is separating us from God eternally yes. unless we repent and receive Christ yes. as our savior. We yes. need to understand mm -hmm. that we are living in the seasons of the times of the end of the age. Yes. That the world is an enemy of God and more and more they're showing their hand mm -hmm. and they're showing us that they're an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. We don't need to waver in our faith. We no. need to stand louder and louder and say, we stand with Jesus. Amen. Unashamed Amen. and unafraid yes. of what the consequences may come yes. from this world. Because remember, this world, the enemy, they can only harm this body. They can't harm our souls. God can protect our bodies, but ultimately we're going to leave this earth mm -hmm. and we are going to get a new body that's going to go into the to eternity. Yeah. Right? And we're going to spend eternity free from what we this this, this demonic world and demonic influence that exists today because mm -hmm. God's going to deal with it once and for all. So we just want to say that yeah. yes. we love you Yes, and we are Jesus praying for you. Jesus loves you. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Amen. that whomsoever believeth in him will not perish but will have eternal, eternal life. life. Amen. So thank you for watching Chief Center Ministry, Yay. where you get me, Greg, the awesome husband, and my wife, Bernice, the beautiful and lovely wife. Yes, right. We love Jesus, and we yes. want to see people make it in the faith, Amen. and we want to see, we believe that we're going to struggle in life. Yes. We know because we've struggled. Yes. We believe there's going to be difficulties and hardships that lie ahead. But we also believe and we know yes. that with Jesus, all things are possible. He Amen. can get us through the most yes, difficult of seasons. Amen. And he can walk us through it. Hallelujah. And there's always going to be a better day in Hallelujah. him. And he will Hallelujah. make sure Hallelujah. that he watches over his Hallelujah. sheep. Hallelujah. Have a blessed and wonderful day. God bless you all.